What's up, Acadiana, and welcome to Offsides. I'm Shannon Wilkerson here with Brandon Como. Thanks for joining us for today's broadcast. We'll be with you until 6 o'clock. And today's a very special day for the Offsides broadcast because if you don't recognize that music, you will recognize this voice. We have none other than Jake the Snake right here in the studio with us today talking about a show that he's doing here in Lafayette. We are so so humbled to be with you here, Oh, sir. my God. Great Stop to it. have you. No, no, look. Wow. Uh, oh, well, look, a, a lot of people around, especially this radio station, oh, yeah. Yeah. big old school wrestling fans, and I'm one myself. Hey, nothing wrong with that, bro. I mean, yeah. I love it. And uh, thanks to uh, WWE and their 24-hour thing, uh, I'm getting a whole new fan base, man. Uh, I mean, young kids come to signings and stuff. I'm like, kids, you, you, you're you you're not even old enough to have seen me. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh, crap, man. I watch you all the time. You're my favorite. I'm like, thank, yeah. thank you, Vince McMahon. Yeah, and thank you, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, okay, absolutely. Because, I mean, yeah, because that's... that's uh, for you, most. For most, yeah. You can pull up as, all those old matches on YouTube. Yeah. As a matter yeah. of fact, uh, in preparation uh, for you coming in today, I was watching one of your old uh, matches with Ricky Steamboat. Oh, yeah. Man, yeah. that must have been some great times. Oh, it was great wrestling Steamboat, man. We just go out there and do things, and, you know, we... We were up there at a time whenever they were just getting that monster going, mm -hmm. and we actually wrestled each other 93 days straight. Good wow. Lord. Twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. You know, you'd be like at L.A. at 2 o'clock and in San Diego that night at 7. Wow. And it, I remember doing it, but I don't remember much. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's sometimes, that's big. That's a big problem. We yeah, recently did a show, um, as, as you well, no, WrestleMania was recently in yeah. New Orleans. That's my hometown. Yeah, I was and there. we did a, I know, and that, yeah. that's why everyone showed up. Yeah. And so uh, we recently did a show the day before, the, the Friday before WrestleMania. We mm -hmm. did a feature story on WrestleMania. One of the mm -hmm. uh, big story, big storylines within that conversation was uh, all of the wrestlers that we lose at such a young age. Right. And so many of them battle addiction. Right. And many of the reasons that they battle addiction is because they, they carry a schedule just like what you just described. When you are when you are wrestling night after night right. after night, then all of a sudden they a lot of times will become hooked on drugs, not mm -hmm. because they want to get high, just because they start Survival. taking pain. Survival. That's Absolutely. right. They start taking pain medicine Absolutely. just to deal yeah. with the pain. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, they have to take the pain medicine because the withdrawals from it are worse than the pain was originally. <laughs> yep. Been there, done that. Yeah. You know? So tell us, at what point in your career mm -hmm. did you know you had a problem with addiction? Is there, um, was there a, when an exact memory that you have where all of a sudden you knew, oh, man, I got a problem? Well, you know, I, I went into a to a rehab and um reason being i do a little cocaine and uh not a little but a lot but uh i went into the, the rehab you know i'm okay i'm gonna be here for 30 days okay i know what i gotta do i gotta cross the t's and dot the i's oh, yes sir no sir okay i'll play the game because that's what i felt i felt it was a game but while i was there vince mcmahon had asked the place to have me see a psychiatrist every day I was there. Mm -hmm. And I thought everybody else was doing the same. And then all of a sudden I said, hey, how many times have you guys seen the psychiatrist? And they're like, well, once a month. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm seeing him every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I asked the psychiatrist. I said, well, you're just trying to find out how you tick, man. I'm like, well, what do you think? He goes, you got a real problem. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so I'm addicted to cocaine. Okay, I get it. He goes, that's not what I'm worried about. Okay, what? Alcohol? No. What? Adrenaline. Oh, okay. So the addiction adrenaline. was really the rush. Right. The adrenaline rush. Performing. Performing, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I kind of laughed it off. That's ridiculous. And uh, went on with my career. And, um, you know, you mentioned all the guys that have passed. I think more than anything, it's not the drugs that get them. It's mm -hmm. the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Not getting that anymore. And I'll, I'll explain that to you. It's like, you know, you, you're a kid and, and you, you, you work hard to get into position to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be college or just working out and being a monster or whatever. And you get to where you want to be. In my case, WWF, WWE, whatever you want to call it. And then one day, for no apparent reason, they take the ball away from it's you. Over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with your talent. 
It has nothing to do with the shape you're in. It's for better lack of term, them not having any ideas to throw your way. Mm-hmm. In other words, so they run out of, they're they bored run, they run of out playing of, with you. They run out of scripting right. and, and storylines. Right. And so, well, we're just going to write right. him out of the script for right. the most part. Why don't you get better writers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've already so proven. Been, I've already proven that I can do whatever you want, yeah. mm-hmm. and that I can put butts in seats, and yet you're taking the ball away from me. And what happens to guys is, and it happens to every one of them that go through there, that ball's taken away, and then you go back home, and Nothing your family's do. looking at you, going, "Well, Dad, what are you going to do now?" Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've been doing this for thirty years, and it's kind of the only thing I know how to do. Yeah. And then you can't find anything that will replace it. You, yeah, well, you look. Yeah, well, it's irreplaceable. It, okay, going into an arena with yeah. 70,000 people mm, screaming crazy, for man. you and, uh, you, you know, getting basically anything you want. Right. Uh, okay, that's, that's irreplaceable, re- really. There's nothing that you can replace, uh, you know, and, and yours, yours is a career, this, this, uh, this industry that you've mm. been in for such a long time is so unique in the professional sports world. It's oh, yeah. unlike like what you just said is a good is a good analysis yeah. or uh like for example football players. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden they can see a lot of times they can see the end of their career coming. Yeah, or, or they blow a knee. Or they blow a knee. That's right. Yeah. It's a, and so they can identify the problem. Okay, mm-hmm. well, they took me off the team because I can't run anymore. Right. Okay. That's but okay. That's okay. They still have a, a very similar problem, right? But right. it's not like what you just described. No, absolutely not, man. And uh, I think more guys have overdosed because they simply don't know what to do with themselves and the way they look at themselves. Mm-hmm. They feel like they failed. You know, it's one thing to fail yourself, but it's another thing to, to fail your children mm-hmm. you know, or your wife or your soon-to-be ex-wife. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. You know. Because that's going to happen too, man. I mean, yeah. Well, maintaining the strain, relationships with the those strain. kind of schedules, right? It, I mean, you're set up. It's you're oh, set up wow. for failure from the yeah, beginning. I've had three successful marriages, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> died. <laughs> yeah, that's about yeah, all that, I can that's say. Right, that's right. That's, that's about right. all I can say, man. It's very taxing. Very taxing. So, if you're just joining us, yes, you're listening to Jake the Snake Roberts as he is live in the studio with us here on Offsides. And uh, Jake, again, thank you so much for coming. Oh, no problem, in. bro. And you know the reason why you're here. Uh, you're out on the road with Hacksaw Jim Dugan. Yeah, Duggan, and, Duggan, two Duggan, Gs. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, we've been talking. You get a lot of debate around Acadiana about yeah. the right way to say that. Oh, by yeah. The way. But go on. <laughs> and so uh, you know, the reason why you're here is because you're out touring and getting this message that you've been talking about mm. um, out across uh, to yeah. audiences all over. You know, I, it's one of the things that I'm doing now. You know, I mean, if somebody told me years ago I'd be doing this, I'd say, hell no, because I'm an alcoholic, you know, yeah. and a drug addict. But I'm no longer that person, you know. I've been clean and sober now six years, and it feels awesome. I'd recommend it to anybody. If you've never picked up a drink or drug, do yourself a favor. Don't start now. The other thing is, we're going to be in town, and what the show's about is called uh, The Unspoken Word. Now, the reason I call it The Unspoken Word is Diamond Dallas Page came to me and he says, hey, why don't you do a comedy show? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. What would I call it? He goes, call it The Spoken Word. <laughs> the Spoken Word. No, Dallas, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to call it The Unspoken Word because I'm going to talk about stuff that nobody else wants to talk about. And I'm going to throw it right back at you, right in your face. Because yeah. one thing I don't have a problem with, and that's telling the truth, you know, whether it be about me or anything else, I just don't care. I, I got to look at myself in the mirror in the mornings, and I found out that if I just shoot straight, I feel pretty good. So one of the things that we talk about is addiction because of what I've been through. Um, Jim Duggan is uh, now sober and clean, mm-hmm. and um, which just blows me away, man, that uh, he chose to go that way too. I like to think that I helped lead the way. But we're finding out that there's a lot more to life than drinking and doing a drug. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the that's the that's the biggest hurdles when you realize yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, can you hang around for one more segment? Well, I guess I can. Okay, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back on offsides with Jake the Snake. And welcome back into Offsides. Brandon Como, Shannon Wilkerson here with you. KPL News Time is coming up on 420. And we're visiting with Jake the Snake Roberts. And Jake, we were talking earlier with you mm-hmm. about the traveling that you've done right. throughout your career all across the country. All right, being back in Louisiana, does it bring back any old memories? Oh, God, yeah, man. I've, I've had three children born in Louisiana. Wow. 
uh, all over in uh, Baton Rouge. But the first mm-hmm. time I moved to Louisiana, mm-hmm. I actually moved to Lafayette. Really? Oh, yeah. I sure no as heck idea. did, man. Sure as heck did. And uh, have some, quite some memorable experiences down here, some I can't talk about. Uh, I think the statute of limitations might not quite be up on some of those. Yeah, well, some but of them, you know how that goes. there's no statute. Yeah, you okay, know, I know so that's right. There's no statute on, on some but, uh, issues. So. Yeah, I think, you know, the food. Yeah. yeah and the people. Mm-hmm. And the people, man. I'm a people person. I love being around people. That's why I'm still doing this stuff on the road. You know, we're doing this show tonight, Hacksaw and myself. And all it basically is is... Uh, two guys sitting around and talking about old stuff, you know, and um, the things, the silly things that we did, the crazy things that we did on the road or maybe in a strip joint. <clears throat> you know, I didn't like to go on, but the, the snake did. Anyway, uh, a lot of good memories come up whenever I think about Louisiana. Not only my children, but, uh, you know, just just the people here, man. They're, they're well, real. it's so easy to uh, to make friends in the South, oh, especially yeah. in this yeah. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People ro- relocate here yeah. and they stay with, yeah. without the intent. They don't realize right. that all of a sudden it doesn't take long to make friends. It yeah, t- it's, it's, it's a different it's, speed. It's a defi- definitely a yeah. different speed. Yeah, I like that. I have a, I have a question that sure. I've been thinking about for a while. And I've, just, I've always wondered this, and um, especially now. Mm-hmm. Now, do you, do, do you actually have pet snakes? No, I hate snakes. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified of them. Oh, Just like everybody else, I'm scared to death of them, but that's what happens when you're young and you're drinking and you're mm-hmm. smoking pot on a long road so trip. you're serious. You're scared I'm, of them. I'm definitely scared of them. Well, I appreciate absolutely. that you did not bring Damien with yeah, you Yeah, absolutely not. Oh, the man. only snake I got has no scales. So, okay, but it, back, in the, back when you would... Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe a couple of warts. That's pretty good. And just one eye. <laughs> wow, yeah. you got it. Yeah, and just and just one eye. Hey, I ain't saying nothing else. Okay, <laughs> so um, back in the day, yeah, who would provide the snakes for you? Well, McMahon paid for it, but I had this psycho that brought them to me. <laughs> you know, everybody's like, "Hey, you bring Damien? Guess what? There were about forty different Damien's. <laughs> And this guy, this guy was definitely a descendant of Charles Manson. He was one weird cat, man. I mean, I remember one night I took him to a strip joint in Omaha, Nebraska, which is kind of weird anyway. I find him one there. I mean, most of the girls, we just tried to find one with all of her teeth, you know, and yeah. no <laughs> tattoos that said dad on her shoulder. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, with a heart. You, know, you know, had summer teeth, you know, some were there, some weren't. But right. anyway, <laughs> and, and no, no hair on her back. But anyway, we uh, get in there and, you know, the guy had been bringing these snakes to me. And, it's, you know, it's a pain in the butt. So I told him, I said, dude, I said, uh. Let me take care of you tonight. I said, uh, pick out one of these girls and I'll pay for it. And he's looks at me and goes, Oh man, I just uh I just gotta take my snakes, man. Oh my god. I'm like, how old are you? Thirty eight. <laughs> and you don't dig chicks. I told you, man. I just take the snakes, man. Oh my god. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm a <clears throat> check please. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Wow. So on the phone line right now, we have one of the biggest wrestling history buffs that oh i have ever known all right we all know him as stevie p steve peliquin on the phone line right now call a cat what's going on steve well i'm i'm i'm, I'm getting ready to talk to a uh to a, a living legend uh first off jake it's uh it really is a pleasure uh thanks for all the memories and congratulations on six years of surviving my friend. Uh, i appreciate that very much a couple of quick questions for you. Um, number one, could you clear up the urban legend about the uh, the DDT? I mean, I, I mm. think I've always been under the impression that you invented that by accident by yep. having uh, the grappler who at the mm. time was was, was Lynn Ditton in a right. chancery. Uh, could 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 you talk about that? And also, mm. uh, hang up and listen. Uh, also, your time in Mid Atlantic, you were you were billed as being from from from, from Texas, and I was just wondering, mm. you know. Stone Mountain, Georgia, Texas, mm. Louisiana. Did it really make a difference from you? Absolutely. Did it, uh, did, did it fit in with a character uh, as to, to where he was from? Did it make any difference to you at all? But again, um, a pleasure uh, talking to you, Jake. Thanks for being here, and thanks for all you've done. Well, as far as where I was billed from, I think they might have been calling me from Texas before I met my second wife. <laughs> and I met her in Stone Mountain, 
So I thought, man, what a cool name. Yeah. You know, so uh, I went with the Stone Mountain, Georgia. And what's been amazing is over the last 15, 20 years, I've probably met 3,000 people that I supposedly went to high school with from Stone Mountain. <laughs> and the first thing I do when they tell me, yeah, we went to school. And I say, yeah, did I sleep with your girlfriend, man? Yeah. And they're like, what? <clears throat> no, my, how about your sister? Yeah, well, I did that too, but I wasn't going to go there. And mom. But anyway, it was a family thing. But uh, as far as the DDT, man, yeah, that was uh, invented by having a front face lock on uh, Lynn Denton, and he went to push me into the corner. He stepped on my foot, and we both fell backwards. And, of course, you don't want to look like you're stumble, fumble, and fall. So you sprung. I sprung to my feet, and I'm like, I didn't fall down. You know, uh, looking at the people. And Lynn was smart enough to lay there because he'd heard the people's reaction, which was, <gasps> you know, and they just blew him away. I'm like, hmm, I might have something there. So, of course, I had to come up with a name for it. So I went with the DDT because uh, one morning I got up and picked up a USA Today, and uh, it says DDT is being outlawed by the U.S. government. Okay, so I got to yeah. ask you, besides yeah. you, who executes the best DDT that you've ever seen? Trish Stratus. Oh. Really? No, but I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it's like, might as well be some hot chick, right? Yeah, it might as well, <laughs> as long as you're on the receiving end. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's say no more. Nudge, nudge, whinge, whinge. <laughs> no, guys, but if you get a chance, come out tonight, and you know we're going to tell stories and stuff. We're going to have a and a so people get your good questions together. Don't ask me, where's your snake? Because I'll show you a snake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but... Bring your memorabilia out. We're glad to sign that stuff up. We're going to have a meet and greet before the show. It starts. The show starts at nine. Meet and greet starts at eight. Uh, yeah. the, the, seven. The VIP starts at seven. For, seven. That's sold so, out. But yeah. you'll, uh, if you don't have VIP tickets uh, after the show, you'll get to meet uh, yeah. Jake and Hacksaw. Or before. Never mind. We'll yeah. figure it out. We're but easy. come out and get a chance, man, because we're going to have some fun. And if you do have an addiction problem and you want to talk serious, not come and BS me because I ain't got time for that. But if you want to talk serious about your addiction problem, man, give me the whinge. Man. Give me a nudge, man. Say, hey, dude, I need to talk to you. And after the show, we'll go someplace, get quiet, and get serious, man, because you got to get help, man. That's where it all starts. I'll tell you one of the biggest causes of addiction, and besides failing or just overdoing it, the friends you choose. Hmm. Think about it, folks. The people that are around you, what you surround yourself with. You ever hear that expression? If you wallow with pigs, chances are you're going to smell like pig poop. Mm -hmm. Well, you are the company you keep. That's it, my friend. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so. unfortunately, I've had some friends that, that, uh, that I've lost over yeah. the years, and I've had friends that have battled with addiction, and one of them recently got out of prison, yeah. and, I, and I'm talking to him about what he's going to do, and really didn't have any plans. I said, you need to move. Yeah, you, absolutely. Need to get, you need to get as far away from fresh, all the people that, that you know yeah. right now, because the only friends you have are the ones that are still out Got there doing there. the same thing. So yeah. that's excellent advice. Absolutely. Also in the studio is Jen Jason Leonard, who who's involved with the show tonight. You mean so JP? Jay oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jason, tell us, give us a, the details on the show, please. All right. So the Lafayette Comedy is bringing another a whopper of a show. Uh, it's going to be tonight at the Worst Beer Garden, which is downtown. That's like two doors down from uh, Antlers, right behind the parking garage where uh, Downtown Live and all that takes place. Um, so VIP sold out, but uh, doors open for general admission tickets at 8. Show will be at 9. And uh, be Hacksaw and uh, Jake will be there. Uh, and we have a, another comedian coming from out of town to open up the show. And uh, we have a good time. The Worst Beer Garden is a great place. You know, I'll be doing table dances about eleven. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, get the fifties out. Look get for the, the sirens. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And that will solve most people's addiction problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah. They're, well, unless they're addicted to crack, then they'll see mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us today, Jay. No problem, guys. I really yeah, appreciate it. We'll be right back here on Offsides.